When you move into the proposal to dissertation phase, you need to choose a dissertation chair. At this point, you need to determine who can best lead you through the dissertation process. This person may or may not be the same person as your academic advisor or the advisor you had for your qualifying exams. Of course, the advisor or advisors you have worked with up to this point can still be committee members if you believe they are a good fit for your project. Your research areas and or interests should drive your decision making when choosing your chair and committee members. When you share your research goals and interests with your advisors, it gives them a better understanding of the help they can provide, and it can help them identify others who have areas of expertise related to your goals. However, you may choose a chair who has a more complementary work style to yours and have content experts as committee members. The key is to consider what you need and choose your advising team based on what works best for you. Here are some tips from faculty about how to select your dissertation chair and committee. Moving from the advising to the dissertation um, relationship, I think is a pretty, bit, pretty intense change because you're now going beyond simple advice about coursework and um, you know, maybe what, what conferences should I go to, to Here's how to write a proposal. Here's what's wrong with your proposal. Here are the changes that you need to make. Here's how to think about putting together your committee. I mean, it's just you're much more intensely engaged with that, with that advisor. And, um, and sometimes when you get to that stage, because the relationship becomes much more intense and um, you're, you're spending a lot more time at least interacting with through email, if not phys meeting physically. You know, sometimes you, you realize that at that period, uh, this is not working out, this relationship is not what I thought it would be. And so students occasionally will change advisors at that point. But it's just, the important thing to know is it's just a much more intense and time, you know, time consuming, and students have to be, I think, open to criticism and you know critiques while recognizing that the, the reason we're doing it is to make the dissertation stronger. So as students move from coursework to the dissertation phase it's important for them to realize that the, their formally assigned advisor may not be the right person to be their dissertation chair or even on their committee at all and that we understand that and you shouldn't feel any kind of compunction of changing who it is who then becomes your important advisor at that position. In terms of selecting somebody who is good, there are a variety of things that you want to think about. Um, one is that you feel comfortable working with the person. You don't want to pick somebody who, even if they are the expert in your field, if for whatever reason you don't click or you don't feel comfortable with them because you're going to be working with them over a long period of time in what is a taxing uh, endeavor for most people. And so you wanna make sure that the person who's your dissertation chair, who's the person that you work most closely with this, is someone who you feel will help you, not hinder you. It's also important, if possible, that they be an expert in the topic that you're going to be doing your dissertation on. Now notice that I did say if possible. It isn't always possible, especially at a small school like CGU, but even at large schools, because the dissertation itself is often quite specialized. And it may be that your topic is, there's just no one in your school who is an expert in that, in what you intend to become an expert in. Ideally though, they should be an expert in something to do with what you're doing. So even if they aren't an expert in say, nonprofit financing, and that's what you want to do your dissertation on, if they're a specialist in certain types of methods that you'll be using, or a, a theoretical model that you might apply to this particular topic area, then that's good. Um, having them be an expert can also help you later in the job market if they're nationally recognized as an expert in the thing, in something to do with what you're doing your dissertation on because the dissertation is partially about what you will sell yourself as when you do enter the job market. It's not only about just the topic right now, but also about a number of years of your research going forward and how you will frame yourself in your interactions professionally. When it comes to your dissertation chair, it is no different than any relationship. It's often not about someone being good or bad, it's about the fit. What are the personality matches? What are the work style matches? So 
what you want to do is research, research, research. What's it like working with this chair? And it's not a matter of are they good or are they bad. It's not a continuum in that way. You want to find out from your peers, from other people who have worked with that faculty, what are the good things, what are the bad things? Because we all have them. No one's perfect. But if the good things are important to you and the bad things don't bother you, that is great. If the bad things really trouble you and the good things you don't see as a benefit, that's not going to be a good fit. So you really need to do your research. And often, if it's not good for the advisee, it's probably also not good for the chair. It's very rare that you hear one person in the relationship is thrilled and the other person's miserable. So it is about finding that match, being honest with your potential chair about where you want to go with your career, what you want your focus to be, what your work habits are, and find out what theirs are and really look for someone that you feel comfortable with and someone that you could be honest with. When it comes time to pick your committee, work with your advisor. Your advisor will know your strengths and weaknesses, and they will know who they want on the committee to complement your strengths and your weaknesses. Also, your advisor will know how busy the other faculty members are. You might be in a rush because you just got a great job offer, so that may lead them to say, well, I know so-and-so is going on sabbatical. Let's pick this professor instead. The professor may have a few favors owed to him or her. So they may say, look, go speak to Dr. You know, X because they owe me and I'm going to call them and say, look, we need to read on this dissertation very quickly. Remember last summer? Okay, I need to call in that favor. So I would very much let it be a conversation between you and your advisor and let it be a joint decision between the two of you to decide on who your committee is going to be. Some people will come in and say, I know I want to work with X person, but more likely than not, I mean, most of the students who come in, I, they just get assigned. Uh, and, I'll, and students have the right to change an advisor, even if you assign to somebody, you know, because that's just a placeholder. And often I always say to students, you know, if I see that they're interested in something that I think they would work better with someone else, I'll refer them to them and say, oh, well, you should work with X. Because I do qualitative and I'm a historian, I don't do statistics and these kinds of things quantitative. So, you know, you should work with that person. I'll be on your committee, but I'm not going to be your chair because I don't do that kind of work. But, um, but I think it should be somebody whose work is compatible uh, and also interested in the kind of work that the student is doing. And I say to students, too, um, with an advisor, it's really important, I feel, to be compatible with your advisor, you know, in terms of uh, being on the same wavelength about what your work is going to be about. And, and also, if you feel that that person, you know, it's sort of like your agent, you know, I mean, if they're going to pe be the person, you know, even with the other people on your committee, you know, to be the front person, you know, I'll call a person, is this good? You know, when my students are coming up for their final oral, do you have any problems with this? Have you talked to them? You know, and these kinds of things um, to make sure that the student is getting the kind of feedback uh, from the other people on the committee. There are a lot of factors that go into who would be the best dissertation chair for a particular student. Obviously, you would like somebody to have content expertise, you know, somebody in the area, somebody who knows the literature, somebody who knows the field, and can not only guide you through the project, but also help you achieve your goals afterwards uh, in terms of your careers and what you want to do with that dissertation afterwards. But you also have to think about the fit. You have to think about, is, is this a person that I work well with? You know, what was my experience with this professor like during coursework or, or during exams? Do we have a, a, a kind of simpatico? That doesn't have to mean that you're best friends. Sometimes you, you want an, ad, an advisor or a dissertation chair who, who pushes you and challenges you and um, who makes you want to be your best self, even if it's hard or, or, or they tell you hard things. But, but there are occasions where you know the top scholar in the field and the person who on paper it looks like would be the perfect person just for whatever reason there's just a, a clash it, it, it just doesn't fit doesn't mean that it, either person is wrong or bad there's, it, there's just not a good fit I think at that point 
then it's 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 smart to to find another dissertation chair, somebody that you're going to work with better. That that's going to be a productive relationship because it's probably going to be a two to three year relationship, uh, and and that's if if you're really humming. Sometimes it can stretch out even beyond that. And of course, keep in mind that your dissertation chair is also going to be writing letters of recommendation. So even after you finish the dissertation, it doesn't end. Um, so you want to find somebody that you can really work with. Uh, and who can challenge you, uh, but also guide you at this stage of your career and afterwards. I think a dissertation chair should be a combination of someone whose research resonates with you, that's interesting to you, that maybe has a similar conceptual met methodological approach. But even if all of that's in place, but you just don't get along personally with that individual, then that may not work. So if you can find a combination of someone you work with well on a personal level, a relation in terms of the relationship, and in terms of the research uh, approach and, and research theme, that's ideal. If you have to choose between one or the other, um, sometimes I think the relationship is more important because that your, your, your academic advisor is the person you're going to be send, spending the most time with by far. And you can always have a subject matter expert serve as a committee member on your dissertation who can you know, chime in when it's important to have some, some expertise on, well, are you covering the literature properly? Did you miss some of the big studies? Um, but it's much harder to fill in gaps when you just don't have a, a good relationship with your advisor. When finding a dissertation chair, I think there's a few things. Obviously, you want to find a person that is best suited to, to your research question and your, and your field of study. That is, in a perfect world, that is the, the, the best characteristic to choose, the, the person with the expertise. However, there's other things to keep in mind that some kind of, can sometimes override that to a certain extent. But often I'll ask the student and say, you know, who else do you think do you, are you thinking about for this committee? And then we, we'll talk about that. And um, I, if I were the student, I would also say, who would you recommend um, for this? So working together with the chair to put together, as you say, a team of different people with different skills. But there's also, you know, there's, um, there's, there can be, depending on the career path of the person, sometimes we get people that want to go into the private sector. Some people who want to go into uh, public sector work, so, you know, working for the Department of State or the Department of Census. Sometimes it can be very useful to put a person on a committee who um, understands that track, right, and, and sees the dissertation can serve different purposes for different types of careers. And so we can put someone who, who has more private sector experience or has more public sector experience and says, this is the sort of tool development we want to see in the private sector. Right, and so can we get a committee that, that is really, again, leading the student towards the preferred outcome for the student, right, through the combination of, of individuals in the, in, in the department. Because I work with them for sometimes seven to 10 years, it becomes a very close relationship. Um, but to get that process moving forward, it takes effort on both sides. The biggest advice that I have is whether the committee and the advisor share the same research. If you select an advisor that doesn't necessarily have the content expertise or doesn't share the research interest, then it, it tends to slow down the process because um, their ability to provide guidance is, is reduced to some extent. And so uh, the dissertations that I see that are more effective and that work and from a both quality and timing perspective that are uh, completed sooner are the ones where they're aligned with what the advisor is doing. Uh, so it's part of their normal uh, expertise area, it's part of their research agenda, and it works out really, really well. When it's outside of that, directly outside of that domain, uh, then it becomes a, a bit of a struggle. And the same thing with the committee. Uh, you want to have a committee that uh, can provide the needed expertise to help you progress. When choosing advisors, you know, first, of course, area of topic of area of interest, that's most important. So you you probably, when entering the program, you kind of have orientation, already know each faculty has their area of research interests and expertise. And I think that's the most important one. And uh, I give the example because my area is usually in data science and analytics. So I usually work with the students who have you know, interest in those area. And naturally they just come to me, right? Like we have faculty like Dr. Samir Chatterjee is really in persuasive technology and health 
you know, so space. So students who are interested in that space usually generally just would go with to him. Um, sometimes they have cross. Mm, um, example, we had us, we have a student, current kind of students ready to do proposal. He actually first came to me because he was very interested in analytics. And so he said, you know, this is my, I really want to, you know, interested to do research in this area. So it had analytic component, but also had the sleeping disorder components. And, ba and also, you know, based on what he does, he does, I said, maybe you also want to talk to Dr. Chatterjee because he's doing this area. So then he talked to Dr. Chatterjee strategy and the, in the process he felt his dissertation probably would be concentrated on that space better than purely analytics. So then I become his uh, committee member and I still heavily involved and any of the other components you know I help but a uh, design and the build and apply component like strategy Dr. Chatterjee does. So this is really expertise and I definitely I think your committee you know members should be able to contribute one or another on their area uh, expertise. So when I work with the PhD students after they finish their coursework and then as well as pol uh, passing their qualifying exam, I talk with them about where they want to go um, research-wise. Some students have a little bit of they want to work with someone in GIS. They also want to work in someone with innovation. So I inform them which faculty members have those backgrounds would be good as maybe chair or even just a committee member. Um, and I tell them to go talk to that faculty member, especially if they haven't established a relationship yet, and talk about the ideas. What's the research that you want to do for your dissertation? And then the faculty member can say, well, you know what? I'm not necessarily the best fit, but I know who is. Or they'll say, you know what? This is a great topic. Let's work together. And since you maybe want to do strategy innovation, let's talk to i.e. this faculty and they'll be part of the committee. So I help them with that situation. Make sure that the members of your dissertation committee get along with each other. You don't want to get caught in the middle of some kind of a territorial war on your dissertation committee. So after you've chosen your chair, which we discussed earlier, make sure that the other members are people who can work well with your chair and with each other.